back to the channel guys. Today, it's been a while, we got a video on my 2001 Jeep Cherokee. We're going to dive into it, show you everything I've done so far, talk about what's coming up, and just get all caught up. Yeah. So for starters, this is a 2001 Jeep Cherokee Sport. Um, didn't come with much, much of anything special from the factory, uh, but comes with a. It had a Dana 30 front, low pinion, and it had a Dana 35 rear that is no longer there. As a whole, we are sitting on nine and a half inches of lift. We have Rubicon Express. Seven and a half inch coil springs up front with a two inch puck. We have Skyjacker 9.5 hydros. We have Rubicon Express long arms. It also comes with a nice beefy uh, trans plate. New control arms welded in, as well as a lot of added support. In the rear, we have Rubicon Express. Five and a half inch leaf springs with two inch shackles, and then this is a rough country two and a half inch shackle relocator mount, which I have to adjust actually back one notch. It is sitting on a Ford 8.8 out of a Bronco, so I was told, but there are a lot of the same out of the uh, Ford Explorers and Sport Tracks. It has 410 gears with a limited slip. Skyjacker uh, hydros again in the rear. Uh, we got just a basic hitch I put on. We are sitting on 35 12 and a halfs on 15 Extreme MTs, Mud Claws. These were cheapo steelies. They're fake beadlocks. They are very nice though and I have spiked lugs. I did cut out the fenders. Tinted the windows, took off all the, uh, the old body protecting panels and stuff. Still a little bit of glue on there though. We have 22 extension break, 22 inch extension brake lines. These are Amazon headlights. They're all just white marker lights. Redid the side lights, the headlights, and the markers. Painted the grill all black. Up front we have. One ton crossover steering with Himes. I want to say I got this from Rough Stuff, but I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember. So it has two Himes on this side, single Heim on this side, Rough Country steering stabilizer, Rubicon Express adjustable track bar, and then we have a Rubicon Express track bar brace to the relocator, drop pitman arm. Other than that, this front axle is completely stock. If you'll notice, I uh, am missing a front drive shaft because I currently do not have one. Um, other than that, I cut the front fenders. I've taped up a lot of holes and bedlined everything that mud can get into, hopefully, to save myself that hassle. I went ahead and added hood louvers. They, uh, they help a little bit with the heat soak. These inline sixes have... Uh, tendency to heat up. It also explains why my hood is mismatched because I painted it and I haven't painted the truck yet. Haven't done anything with the tail lights yet. Took the rear bumper off because it was rotted to hell. Painted our rear diff cover. This has all new spring perches and then that is a right stuff brake kit, disc brake kit. 
It is a dual caliber where it is spring actuated for my emergency brakes and fluid activated by my pedal for my standard brakes. I have to fix some of the brake lines and whatnot. It's looking a little, a little bit junky. I'm waiting on a skid plate for my tank. This quarter panel here was replaced because this was all rotted out. I'll have a video on that. But uh, that's about it. We'll hop onto the inside. All right, now as far as the Cherokee goes, I have left a lot of it as I could. I need to do something about my steps though. They're getting a little beat up. The door I have not touched is all stock. I have some bags and pockets to put on. The seat's got a little rip in it, which is nothing unusual, but gray interior. Dash has been all left alone. My steering wheel is upside down. I have not adjusted it after I did the steering. Uh, it is a five-speed manual swap. It has an AX15 to a 231 transfer case, five-speed. So we got a Crown Royal bag as our shifter boot. And then uh, we did have to do aftermarket linkage for my four-wheel drive, which I've been having issues with adjusting and it binding up. Um, right now our emergency brake is hooked up, but it is not adjusted. Duncan Coffee, that is essential for every drive. We have a power inverter on this side, and then the usual uh, garbage in the front seat. I ended up going with floor or uh, door mats from Home Depot for floor mats. They uh, they were great. They fit decent. Our clutch pedal ended up coming out of a t uh, 03 or a 4 TJ. Uh, with some slight modification, it had to be cut and bent up in order to work with the brake pedal. Um, but yeah, other than that, I uh, I did take some time and I redid the headliner. I did even the flip downs, sun visors. I installed a box in the center. This top section is bolted through the roof, sealed. And then these panels come down. I have interior lights that are actuated by the door. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Gotta close that door. And I changed the ones on the floor to LEDs as well. But other than that, we have interior lights. It's nice and bright. We have hood lights underneath my hood. I will show you. I have LED lights for working at night. And then soon to come, we have rock lights, uh, footwell lights, like LEDs. And then I have a secondary battery to hook up, as well as some uh, other fun stuff. I have a slot cut out for a GMRS radio to be installed, as well as the off-road uh, speaker to go with it, to go there. So it's right next to our, my ears. But yeah, that's that. The back seat, I haven't touched much. Added a little bit of shag carpet. A little back seat or back of the seat organizer. I, I don't even know what you call it to be honest. But yeah, some more garbage underneath the seat. I keep a mat, a couple straps, and uh, some jumper cables, a little shovel, blocks of wood over there for my jack. The entire interior has been stripped. I put laid down new floor pans in a lot of areas. And then I laid down sound deadening and then several coats of Raptor liner. So I have pictures of that. So it's all, it's very quiet for what it is, even though it has a cherry bomb. It uh, rides nice and smooth. It's quiet with the sound deadening and the bed liner makes it super easy to clean up. Going on to our trunk, we have some more of this carpet. Keeps uh, the bed liner from getting too beat up. I went ahead and mounted a Husky bag I found at Home Depot. Keep a razor blade, a knife, I got some gloves, and I have my, this is a uh, tire pressure gauge. I got some duct tape just strapped in there. And then I have my fire extinguisher mounted on the side for quick access. Um, I got my normal, you know, I have a dog leash for when me and the girl bring the dog out. I got a hatchet for cutting wood and an axe for, you know, if stuff's down in the trails. This tub here 
has all the tools I could ever need on the side of the trail. I have toe straps, I have um, pliers and such, I have paper towels, this is small bungees, electrical tape, over here there's a tire kit, all my ratchets, wrenches, everything is up in here. I will do a video on that specifically. Then I have a kinetic rope, change of clothes, my small jack, towel, blanket, extra jacket. I have my light with me. Sometimes we go out at night a lot. And then I went ahead on this left side where there's normally a cut out here. It's, uh, it's usually a very unusable space, to put it in simple terms. So I went ahead and drilled some holes along the side, threw some rope through. Uh, these are just air fresheners. Those are not important. We have more gloves. This is a med kit. Uh, it's got just bandages, band-aids, all the essentials if I were to get ever hurt. Uh, some power steering fluid because uh, I just did a power steering pump on this and I just had it just in case. Some extra brake fluid in case I would have had an issue with a brake line. Some bug spray. Went ahead and mounted a machete for a clearing trail and stuff like that. It's, it's very convenient to not have to dig and try to find it. It's always accessible. Other than that, I stopped to the headliner in the back here, and you'll see why in some upcoming videos. I'm going to be building shelves and a lot of stuff back here, speakers and such. But that's about it. I keep an empty hitch in it, so that way I have something to put a D-ring to and uh, get myself pulled out. All right, now the good stuff. Under the hood, uh, I haven't done anything too special, obviously, other than the hood louvers. Um, I eventually would like to do a cold air intake to a snorkel, possibly. I'm not sure what I haven't decided yet. Um, other than that, it is pretty much bone stock, other than a new battery, some new battery terminals. I did, if you know Cherokees, under the front bumper, there are usually a vacuum line for cruise control, uh, to like a, a sphere or a ball that controls the vacuum pressure. And then your horn is mounted on each side, but that wasn't going to work for me. So I went ahead and relocated my oh, shadow here, my horns to this nice little cavity in here. It allows me to keep them, but you know, they're out of the way and they won't get hit on things. There's plenty of room next to the battery, as well as I capped off. If you could see that silver tape, there's the vacuum line. I took off that and doing the manual swap, I lost, um, my cruise control anyway, because uh, actually, well, I, I guess I could have ran it through the wiring harness, but I ended up doing away with it. So I lost two of my uh, throttle cables, which simplified it down to one. I have a cluster of wires back there, which is where my junction is. I have to jump pin, oh God, I think it was three and five or three and eight, something like that. So that way I have a neutral safety. I got some grounds up there, but other than that, I just did a power steering pump. Um, it has a newer electric fan. I did a valve cover gasket as well as I painted the valve cover. I did a rear main on it, but I think it needs another one because it's leaking like a sieve. And uh, you can probably, yeah, just in the few minutes sitting here, it's it's been leaking. So that's not good. <laughs> but other than that, she is bone stock. I have my lights up in these corners here that I can access from the inside. So when I'm working at night, it lights up the engine bay. It is quite tall. So uh, working on it does usually require a bucket of some type. <laughs> but yeah. That's her in all her glory up top. Those are the bolts for my overhead console. Eventually the whole roof needs to get bedlined anyway to protect it from peeling and scratching. So that's on the list, but for now it keeps it watertight and solid. But yeah, here she is. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see more of. I can dive deeper into steering, what I had to do for the lift to make it work, things I had to do to the rear axle to make the rear axle work. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that went in with the manual swap, the pedal, you know, the ECU and a lot of other details, but uh, you guys let me know what you want to see more of. I will do it. Other than that, have a great day, and uh, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to see more.
Peace out.